I also take this opportunity to invite our guest speaker to deliver the ceremonial graduation speech. And I believe she is online, joining us on the virtual mode. And it's none other than Professor Tusita Abetunga. Permit me to read out a citation. Tusita Abetunga is a senior professor attached to the Department of Chemistry, University of Sri Lanka, Colombo, Sri Lanka. She read for her PhD at the University of Arizona, USA on synthetic organic chemistry. Apart from the regular teaching and research work at the Department of Chemistry, she was instrumental in starting the MSc in Applied Organic Chemistry program, which created an opportunity for the graduates in Sri Lanka to pursue their postgraduate studies. She supported commercialization of research at the Faculty of Science by establishing Colombo Science and Technology Cell, called the Cell, at the Faculty of Science. At university level, she worked as the Director and Operational Technical Secretariat, OTS, under the Higher Education for 21st Century HETC project, which was funded by World Bank. At present, she is working as the lead academic expert on research and innovation under the Ministry of Education on accelerating higher education expansion and development ahead, which is an operation funded by the World Bank. Under the head operation, University Business Link, Linkage, UBL, cells which act as technology knowledge transfer officers were established in all state universities in Sri Lanka. Madam Professor Tusita Abetunga, the floor is yours. Dear graduates uh, who are specialized in uh, subject areas in social sciences and humanities and the parents, all the parents and the guardians who helped you to come this far. Let me congratulate all of you on this very special day in your life. It would have been nice to see all your happy faces but I'm recording this and I'm wishing you the very best in your future. You will leave this hall with a lot of hopes for the future. A good job, a happy family and much more. So I decided to share a few stories with you during this speech so that you can take some take home lessons when you leave this hall. So let me start with this simple story about a 12-year boy named Henry from Los Angeles, USA. When the pandemic started in 2020, he was confined to his home and he had pets to play with, but no friends around and he was bored to death. And Henry loves baking. He also loves chocolates. So he decided to make these special chocolates at home and he decided to start a chocolate company. Will it ever work because 12 year old boy making chocolates and not eating them? But he was successful and what this shows is that is, that is the fact that Henry had a lot of self-discipline and commitment. So the parents who are listening to this uh, speech must be thinking you didn't want your son or the daughter to come to University of Colombo and finish a degree and start a chocolate company. However, please think that this boy is just 12 years old. Your son or your daughter finished the degree and they have a lot of exposure. They have read well. So they can do unimaginable things with the knowledge that they have gained so far. So remember, these are unpredictable times and these crisis situations foster entrepreneurship. Now the next story is about a company making exercise machines. The name of the company is Peloton. In 2020, as you know very well, 
uh, people were homebound. They were working from home. Online teaching, online learning, and even private sector, they were doing most of their work online. So there was a great demand for these exercise machines. And in 2020, the company profit skyrocketed due to this massive demographic change of population doing exercises while working from home. So what does it tell us? It is the timing that helped this company Peloton to increase their profit. So this tells us timing is very important and also we need to look around for new opportunities. Let us look at another example, the familiar Uber Eats. When you work from home, you get your food delivered to your home or sometimes to your office. So this tells us that there are new opportunities in front of us. So when you look around for a job or engaging in these entrepreneurial activities, we need to think differently and we need to look around but new opportunities around us. Because the audience is from social sciences and humanities, I thought it is appropriate to draw your attention to this organization called ASPECT in UK. What they are trying to do is they are trying to connect the academics in social sciences and humanities with industry and private sector to transform the society through social science innovations. And Professor Julia Black is heading this organization now. She's from London School of Economics and Political Science. I quote, although most social science research projects cannot be patented, the outcome of social science research can be commercialized if you describe your research properly to show the impact. So what this tells us is that social sciences and humanities, the research that you all have done as undergraduates can be taken to market if you think differently and also not only to make money but to help the society. All right, so what options do you have? Let me take you back to 1971 and talk about this student who was studying at Portland State University in USA. So his professor at his university wanted her to design a logo for his business. And this student also needed some money. I'm sure it's familiar to all of you. So she decided to accept the offer. She was given only $2 an hour and she was uh, giving designs and the professor is not happy. So she kept on working on it. And finally, she came up with this logo right in front of you, red tick mark. I'm sure you're familiar with this mark because you have seen it. Maybe think about the shoes some of you are wearing. So this is referred to as swoosh, the Nike logo. So, as you know, today Nike is one of the most recognizable brands in the world. But you saw just a little while ago that uh, the student name is Caroline. Caroline was not paid much. However, many years later, Nike arranged a reception for Caroline. So she was given this logo in gold and 500 shares of the company. And at the time of the award, uh, it was the shares were about $150. Uh, but now it, it may be um, millions worth logo. So what does it tell us? This creation of this logo involved imagination, creativity, and also perseverance. And this tells us that imagination and creativity can really help us in the commercial world. And this is something that you all as social sciences and humanities students, you can do better than STEM students. So with this background, let us look at this word valorization. 
I'm sure you're familiar with this word. If not, valorization means you create social or economic value from scientific knowledge. But have you ever heard of valorization in social sciences and humanities? If not, please Google valorization at University of Amsterdam. You, when you Google it, you will get this book uh, that they have published where they talk about how to uh, undertake social science and humanities research to help the society or industry. Who knows, you have done your research projects as special degree students in many disciplines in the arts faculty. So you may be able to use this guide and see something differently so that you can make use of the research that you have done at the University of Colombo. As I understand, your area of uh, studies involves understanding humans, human behavior, human relations. So I thought I will end my talk by referring to this example from social entrepreneurship. Again, I will take you back to 1970s, this time to Bangladesh, a country close to us. There was this Professor Yunus, a professor of economics at the University of Chittagong. So in 1970s, when Bangladesh suffered this famine, he thought he needed to do something beyond his simple teaching duty at the university. So he decided to give long-term loans to people who wanted to start their own businesses. And then later, he extended this using this Grameen Bank. And Professor Muhammad Yunus was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2006 for their efforts to create economic and social development from below. So these microfinancing models, as you know, are helping millions and billions of people in the world. So I'm sure uh, as uh, fresh graduates from social sciences and humanities, you will also be able to come up with different models to help the society because today all the people in the world, not only in Sri Lanka, they are facing a lot of hardships. So you can think differently and maybe think of these social entrepreneurship models as well. So let me end my talk stating that I'm sure all of you have innovative ideas and the vigor necessary to help communities experience this social trauma due to limited access to food or maybe environmental issues and things like that through community-led, community-driven support system to get them out of poverty. So I wish you good health, wealth, and most importantly, the happiness in the years to come. Thank you very much. And I like to take this opportunity to thank the Vice Chancellor, University of Colombo, for giving me this opportunity to address you and to wish you the very best. Thank you.